Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Welcome to The Actor's Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi everybody, I'm Ron Brewington, and welcome to The Actor's Choice. In today's world, one of the most important tools that actors, actresses, performers, etc., definitely need to be successful is a good picture, a good photograph. Through that photo, the public can see for themselves just what you look like. Good things can happen. You can get invited to an audition, get a role that you really want, and so forth and so on. Get the picture? <laughs> well, my guest today has been using a camera to get great results for more than 24 years. He's been an industry, he's seen this industry move forward from the days of Kodak to today's totally advanced products. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome veteran photographer and a man who sees a lot of smiles, Harvey Bronwyn. Harvey, Thanks, thank Ron. you very much for being here today. Thank it's you my very, pleasure. very much. Got to ask you that famous question. What made you get into photography? My brother was born eight and a half years after I was. Uh -huh. And even though I had an older sister by two years, my parents gave me a brownie and said, I want you to take the pictures of the family. So at the age of eight and a half, nine years old, I was starting to take pictures. Oh, brownie. I haven't heard that word in years. Right. My goodness. Yeah. So what kind of training did you go through to become a, a photographer? It was pretty much self-taught except for a couple of classes at a local camera shop, mm -hmm. learning basic rules, well, the rule of three where you divide the grid up and make uh, things more interesting composition-wise and paying attention to the lighting of nature, but I had never taken any studio lighting classes until about 1990. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and that uh, two weekend workshop was enough for me to decide to get lighting equipment and put a backdrop in my living room and set up a studio. And you still, so your first studio was in your house. Right. right. That was interesting. And uh, so, what did you learn from these early customers that you got? I learned that they enjoyed having me direct them because it's really important as a, in a, any production, a movie, play, there has to be some direction. Yes. And if you build rapport with the people that you're directing, you're going to get much more cooperation and you're going to get the end results. Right. It's right. interesting that you say your rapport, we'll talk about that a little later on, but okay. your rapport is off the hook, man. Thank off you very much. I had the pleasure of saving some time with this gentleman, and i got to say he's got some excellent rapport. By the way, I, <clears throat> I love the customer rule. As customers, we always say rule number one, the customer is always right. But rule number two, if the customer is wrong, refer to rule number one. So <laughs> I, I guess uh, you, you do a lot of that yourself. Um, the, now you got, okay, now you have, let's move fast forward a little bit. You got a studio in Burbank. You call it Photography as an Art. I like that. That's a Thank nice you. name. How'd you get that? Before I went into photography as photographing people, I was photographing scenery. Okay. And I was actually framing them and giving them as gifts. And once I was in an art fair and I met this young fellow that was doing a similar work and selling his photographs as wall art and we hit it off and he told me where he was getting his photographs enlarged and even framed and I was living in Topanga Canyon picture me with long hair okay <laughs> and and this was in 1977 mm -hmm. so because I lived in Topanga Canyon I could actually enter the Malibu Art Festival so I had several pictures enlarged from 5 by 7 up to 16 by 20 maybe even a couple bigger ones and I entered the Malibu Art Festival, and surprisingly, I won first place in color photography. So that actually was where I came up with a name, because I'd have marketing material to get into more of these art shows. And I came up with photo photography as an art, and nobody had ever used it, so I trademarked it. Good, good. Yeah. Now, where's your studio, your current studio located at? It's in Burbank, right off the 5 Freeway, mm -hmm. on a major street, San Fernando Boulevard, near Burbank Boulevard. 
Been exactly. there 24 years. 24 years. Wow. 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 And over those 24 years, Harvey, you have become extremely proficient in photography. One of your niches is creating images that really capture the personality of your clients. Can you explain, can you add on to that, please? Well, I tend to be very cordial and joking, mm -hmm. almost, you know. Um, I do have a philosophy, and I think I may have told you before mm -hmm. that people either believe in Adam and Eve or evolution. I don't care which way they believe. There aren't too many other choices. So I personally feel like we all came from those first human beings, and I treat everybody like a long-lost cousin. Mm. I don't like all my cousins. <laughs> I didn't like Osama <laughs> bin Laden. I never met him. He had bad parenting. You yes. know. And there are some people that over the years have taken advantage of my good nature. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very trusting in business. And those people, I just take them off the list. Right. That's all you got to do. Right. Definitely. Definitely. No need to put up with that kind of stuff. Definitely. Right. There's a process that a client goes through. Can you explain that process when they say, Harvey, I'd like you to take my picture. What's that process from the time they come to you to the end result? Well, there's two types. There's the individuals mm -hmm. for headshots, either business headshots for whatever business they're in, mm -hmm. or actors. And then there's also the families that call me and say, we'd like to do a family portrait. Mm -hmm. Well, then I have to ask them certain questions as to what they're expecting at the end result. Mm -hmm. uh, do they envision a large portrait on the wall, or is this going to be something they're going to be using just for business like yourself with mm -hmm. the, the business portrait we did of you in the studio? Okay. If it's only for that use, then I let them know that we're going to take a lot of pictures. We're going to do various smiles. In fact, I have that process that I learned from a s client that came in who was in the process of taking drama classes, and she said, my coach said, when I go to have my portrait done, have a photographer take several series of five photographs, mm -hmm. starting with a small smile, going up to the biggest smile you can make. And as it turns out, almost everybody likes number three or four. So I've been using that technique for several years. But when it's a family, I make sure that they understand that it's important to wear very similar, if not matching, attire. Okay. And I let them know that they can even bring the grandparents if they like, because I love doing the extended family. I've actually done a couple of five-generation family portraits. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more rewarding for me than that. And when we do it, I make sure that they're actually showing affection towards each other. I'm very clear about the fact that there's going to have to be some touching going on in the family portrait. And that's, actually, I have a f funny experience. Please, tell us. Do you remember Harold Ramis? I've heard the name. The, the writer, director, mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, Harold and I grew up together in elementary school. And he was out here, and his wife's family wanted to do a family portrait for the grandmother. Mm -hmm. But there was a little riff in between some of them. And they came in, and we got them all together, and we're doing very casual photographs of the, the three, sib three siblings with their spouses and the kids. And I, get a, an, I got a postcard or a note about a day or two later that they had gone out for lunch afterwards and it had been a healing, co healing process. So I liked the fact that my getting them together, so I, li I like to call myself a licensed social phototherapist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's it like working with children since you and the family? The best part with the children is to make them understand that they can have fun. I ask the parents to bring their favorite toys if they're really young. Mm -hmm. um, I have some toys in the studio, balls. Kids love to play ball, no matter, you know, if they're, as long as they're like two years older or up to five or six years old, they love to play catch, you know. Right. I'll be having them play catch with me and it brings out big smiles for them. And I've only had one experience where I couldn't get the kids to cooperate, and it's because the mother would not leave the room for me to work with these twins, mm -hmm. and they were not happy. And so sh I couldn't get the results I wanted. Did you ask her to leave? It's the only time. Did, she, did you ever get her to leave the room? Never? No. Yeah. Oh, boy. Because I told her, you know, you, it's not going to work if, unless you walk down the street and go get a cup of coffee yeah. so that I can have them. Because I have an assistant when I'm doing kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's never been an issue besides that one time. Okay. How about working with senior citizens or handicapped people? I did have a very interesting experience. I had these two pe two older couple, this older couple, mm -hmm. and they were celebrating their 75th anniversary, so they were all well into their 90s, and both came in wheelchairs. So I have a big, comfortable chair. I had the dad sit in there, and then I had the mom lean on the chair behind them and put her arms on the shoulders and even hug them. So you couldn't even tell that they were disabled. 
And then about a month later, they had a really big 75th anniversary party, and we were up there photographing the party. It was, mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun. When you work with people like that, what's the feedback that you get? People say, you did the job right. There's so many compliments that yes. I get. Yes. Um, and just because I was going to be on the show, I got so many emails back saying, uh, and people that I haven't photographed for years telling me how much their my photographs on their walls and they just cherish them. Outstanding, yeah. outstanding. And of course, what's it like working with actors, actresses, performers, people like that? Because I look at them on the same level, I have mm -hmm. never had an issue with their their ego, my ego. Mm -hmm. You know, because I I feel we're all equal. Right. Mm -hmm. It's that ego. Yeah. So yeah, work with it. Yeah. I, I don't care who the people are. Right, they're just people. They're just people. They get right. up in the morning just like you and I. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, because I actually mm -hmm. photographed the honorees for one of my favorite charities, which is Shane's Inspiration. Okay. I get celebrities that come in, people that are extremely wealthy, and they, there's always an honoree that's had a, a birth defect or an accident, and f one of them was a gold medal winner in downhill skiing whose legs she lost during a car accident several years ago and mm -hmm. she's a gold medal winner and we had such a good time and then I had another one come in where she was born with no legs mm -hmm. and her father gave her up for adoption immediately and she, her, the parents that adopted her had three very healthy children and the dad taught her that the word no doesn't exist mm -hmm. and she's also a gold medal and she performs around the world with no legs Turns out that she's Nadia Kolmanich's birth sister, oh. who was a gold medal winner mm -hmm. like 20 years ago. And now, now they're close friends. So it was a very interesting story, and I have great images of that yes. because she was very comfortable with me. Just love that session. Yeah, Harvey, those are the good stories you like to hear. Those are the ones that bring tears to your eyes because you know we're human beings. We're all out here, and you, even though it's a problem for somebody else, it's a joy for somebody else. Right. Indeed. Indeed. I was reading a recent article about headshots. Yes. And they said, quote, multi-look character headshots are so passe. What does that mean? Well, in the old days, mm -hmm. and I'm talking 15, 20 years ago, people would want to do a, a photograph, um, a sheet with there'd be three or four different expressions on it. And from what I understand, the booking agents, they don't want to have to look at a lot of images. They want to look at one image that really captures the person as they are, mm -hmm. their personality, mm -hmm. without a lot of different drama, just a pleasant photograph to feel comfortable with that person. They're going to be able to direct them because mm -hmm. if, if you don't have a, a, a talent that you feel will be directable, right? you don't want to hire them. No, you don't. I mean, they look at an, you know, a photograph and they look at a photo. How many of them must look at thousands, thousands of photographs yes. for casting one role, right? Yes. yes. Even if it's a non-speaking role, mm -hmm. right? You got to have that look. These right. days, you got to have that look. Right. Your headshot also says in the article that it should look like the best version of you, you, not a glamour shot that you could never reproduce without the intervention of a fairy godmother. What does that mean? Well, there are glamour photographs out there. Yes. And the glamour photographs are for one particular use, but for the industry, when people mm -hmm. are looking to get hired for a role in a film or a play, or on the back of their book, mm -hmm. they want to look real. A glamour photograph is totally different. That might be for an ad for Revlon or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not what I do. I have had people bring in a hairstylist and a makeup artist, mm -hmm. but that's not for the typical headshot for performers. Okay. Uh, recently, you did a headshot of me. We had did a, did a shooting, and I got to tell you, it was a fun, fun experience. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, you got, I got exactly what I wanted. Folks are now seeing what the picture looks like. That's what it looks like. Uh, looks very good in that picture. Um, any feedback from the session we had together that maybe I could do, I could learn myself that I might be able to use in the future? Well, it was a pers it was a great pleasure mm -hmm. because when Ron Irwin brought you in to yes, introduce you to me, right? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had no idea what you were like, mm -hmm. you know, and I felt that we clicked right away. Yeah, I think you so. Know, we have yes. a very similar philosophy about mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. and. We both enjoy people, mm -hmm. you know, so it was just a pleasure to have you sit down in front of the camera after we had gotten to know each other. We're, you were there for at least a half hour before yeah, we started taking pictures, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed. And then when you told me to take my, stick my right hand out 
and you took a dow silver dollar <laughs> out of your pocket <laughs> and put it in my hand. Yes. <laughs> and I carry this with me all the time. Thank you, Ron. That's okay, Harvey. That's okay. <laughs> it's my trade money. I call it something to do. Something to do. Tell me about the silver dollar. Yeah, oh yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's something I've been doing for years. It's something I love I it. Thank you. Thank you. I also read several testimonials that you have gotten from past clients. Uh, uh, one of them, Gwen Fox, she's a singer, a talent uh, agent, and she has three children who are agents. Uh, she, here's what she said. She said, quote, I'm always thrilled at how your professional eye captures organic moments of my performance. She goes on to say that your work is always amazing. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So obviously there's a lot of pride you have in what you do. Oh, I do. Definitely. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't. Mm, mm, mm. Well, at this point in the show, I'd like, we're about halfway through the show right now, I'd just like to take a few moments and make an announcement to the, the public about why we invited Harvey here today, besides being a nice guy that he is and the professional that he is. He's, he and Ron Irwin, you guys got together and brought us along. Uh, you came up with a photography discount coupon package. Can you please tell us about that, sir? Well, if it's people that you're introducing to the program yes they're going to receive a hundred dollar discount off of my normal package for headshots which mm -hmm. is three hundred dollars mm -hmm. and for the three hundred dollars i normally take plenty of time i schedule an hour people want if they want to change clothes two or three times that's fine mm -hmm. um i feel that the, they should actually wear the one attire that they feel most comfortable in instead of taking the time to change clothes because they usually pick out the smile that they like the best and the clothes really don't matter that much. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the expression and so we're doing a hundred dollar discount to anybody that's recommended because of you and Ron and I'm showing the flyer. Yes, and it's got a little flyer that we've put together. Uh, it get, you'll see what it looks like. There we go. Uh, and he's also got another one on TV there. Uh, just to let folks know, uh, we have a hundred dollar discount. Uh, we want to thank you for sincerely thanking you for working with us. We want this to be a very successful thing project. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to be doing is giving it to all the guests that we have on the show from now on. Uh, a weekly commercials we'll be talking about it on the show. Uh, we'll send it to all the contacts that we want to get it out there. Shotgun approach. I'm not sure, I can handle all that business. Well, we hope there's that you do. There's only we 12 know. hours in my day. <laughs> we'll take. We'll make 13 hours for okay. you. Indeed. Fine. Indeed, and when people who I know, I just like to let them know there's a good photographer that I know. Uh, please give me a shot. And see sure, what we can do definitely, definitely. They're all uh, my cousins anyway. Indeed, indeed. I like you. I like that attitude. As you say, Harvey, it's so good to see the personal touch that you give when you're doing your job as a photographer. Uh, but has to you has photography become so commercial that they've lost the touch? I haven't. Okay. You mean other photographers? Other photographers, yeah. I, I can't compare myself. Okay. You know, I, I'm not real social with a lot of photographers, although okay. I know that the digital world has caused several of them to go off into different fields. Right. You know, because even when it hit about nine, ten years ago, our business really took a drastic hit. Mm -hmm. So we were struggling uh, for several years until I found my second business. Yes. And do you know what? That is, mm -hmm. right. But the, f uh, the future of photography, how, is it bright? Is it bright? I, I feel that there's a, a resurgence. Okay. I think that there are more people realizing that a cell phone or people even having a very good camera that don't know how to light images, mm -hmm. you know, um, and don't know how to do composition, mm -hmm. they're, they're, t they're starting to come back. I've actually had several people that I hadn't seen for quite a while call me and say, uh, we'd like to book another session. All right. All right. I brought along with the, the latest issue of uh, The Hollywood Reporter, and as you can see as you go through it, look at all the pictures that you see in there. Nothing but pictures. Pictures, photographs, photographs. The that's a strange does. photograph you're showing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that massage. Here's a little baby. Uh, right. Again, photographs, we see them every day. And I know I teach a class over at Santa Monica College, and we say that you see over 3,000 ads a day, and most of them are pictures. Right. Pictures are in our world, and now with the technology, like you said, people's got their people have their own camera. They can go out there and take a picture of this, that, anything they want to do with it. It's amazing what we do with pictures. It is amazing. But the personal contact. Now you happen to bring along with you, speaking personal. Right. Harvey, you brought along a picture of a young man. Please tell our audience who that person is, please. Well, this photograph hangs yes. in my office of, at home. Yes. And this happens to be my father, mm -hmm. and I took this long before I made the career change. I actually had 
I take it back. That's when I had the studio set up in my home. Okay. And that was before I opened up my studio. Mm -hmm. So he was um, about seven or eight years before he got real sick and passed away. Okay. So I love that photograph. My mother was quite a bit younger when she passed away, and I don't have a professional photograph of my mother, even though I have photographs of us when we would travel together, but nothing quite as nice as that. Okay. I, I know sometimes they say to certain people in certain professions, like a doctor, don't treat family members and things of that nature. But what's it like being a photographer for your own family? And well, friends? every year up until the last couple of years, we would gather all of my children, Hazel's children, mm -hmm. and the grandchildren together for our holiday card. And it started when our first grandchild was born 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. We would take a photograph of, of us with that one child. And that would be our holiday card to all of our family and friends. And then we would have a second grandchild and a third and a fourth. And as we got to the point where there were seven grandchildren, we would always go to a different location. Mm. And one of them was really fun. We went up to the Griffith Park Observatory. And everybody had a silly hat on. <laughs> and the, the adult children were in the picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I had a tripod, but I figured I'd have to find somebody up there to take the picture. Mm -hmm. And I saw a woman having her picture taken with a Hollywood sign behind her. And I assumed that the guy who was taking the picture was her boyfriend. And no, she had just handed the camera to this fellow to take mm -hmm. a picture of her. Mm -hmm. And we started talking, and she's from Brazil. And so I talked to her. She had a nice camera. She knew what she was doing. So I had her come over, and even though I set up the picture, she took the picture of the group of us. And as it turned out, she was spending a couple of days here before she drove up to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And she actually spent the, the next day at our house because we were inviting to a party, and now we communicate by email probably once or twice a month. Yeah. And uh, it's funny how you can build close relationships oh, yeah, over a right, camera. Right. Have, first of all, it's about your attitude. I always believe your attitude will determine your altitude, and you meet people all the time. You're a people person. You have to deal with people. Everybody's not perfect. You know, sometimes you find some mean. I don't know anybody that's that, perfect. No, exactly. he, he died about 2,000 years ago. Didn't yeah, he? I think he did. Yeah, right. I think he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, the average person, you know, again, and you're out there, you're trying to do them a service as well as have fun doing the same. Do you want to hear a funny story? Please, I'd like to hear All right, so we were going to go on a cruise to Alaska. Okay. But we spent two days in Vancouver. And at the hotel, the concierge says, you've got a car, drive up to Whistler. It's a beautiful ski area, stop at Shannon Falls. Big waterfall like Yosemite. So we get out of the car, and this guy's taking a picture of his wife, but she's so far away, she's going to be really small. So I walked up to him and said, would you like me to take a picture of you and your wife with the falls, and he said, sure, here's my camera. Turns out that her father and my father were friends when I was a little boy. Wow. wow. How does that happen if you don't talk to people? That's right, yeah. Another cousin. It's amazing, people don't talk to each other. Please thank and excuse me, you don't hear that right. anymore. What yeah. happened to that? What kind of specialized equipment do you use now? The specialized equipment is actually a, a professional strobe, which I mount several inches above the camera when I'm out doing on location photography, okay. and in the studio I have a couple of strobes and, uh, flat and umbrellas. Okay. It's very simple compared to where it was before I remodeled, and my backdrop is big enough that I actually did a family with 11 people just a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they're going to have a 20 by 24 on the wall at home and, and several other small 8 by 10s and 11 by 14s. Made my day. Indeed. Yeah. What are the changes that happened over the years? You don't use film anymore, do you? No. The first time I picked up a digital camera, which was very amateurish, but I needed it for an event that I was hired to photograph, and they wanted to have prints on location. Mm -hmm. So we bought very rudimentary equipment, mm -hmm. and then I eventually moved into professional Canon stro uh, lighting equipment, uh, Canon cameras, and I've been with Canon ever since. Even though I was a Nikon man when I was shooting 35 millimeter. But Canon was far in advance from Nikon back, yes. you know, 14 years ago when What's I started. What's that we call features? It has more features than another camera. Right, right. Cameras are costly? They can be. Yes. Yeah, and I'm not the type to go out there and buy the brand new one that came out just last week because it's got some new bells and whistles. The yeah. one that I have is several, three or four years old and mm -hmm. does a perfect job as you saw. Mm -hmm. Maintenance? How, how, how much maintenance do you have to do on cameras to keep them up? Very little maintenance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, you and your position in Burbank, you're known in Burbank. Uh, you get involved in community affairs. Uh, can you show him that picture, please? There's a picture we have of, of, uh, of Harvey when he's out there doing something. There you go. There you go. There you go. Look at that one. <laughs> That's 
two years ago or three years ago with the family, right? Uh -huh. um, I am very involved. I'm right. involved with the chamber. I'm chamber. involved with a network group, group mm -hmm. called BNI. But my favorite is our Kiwanis Club. Yes. There's a Burbank. There's three Burbank Kiwanis Clubs, and the Burbank Noon Kiwanis Club is now 96 years old, and right. I've been in it for 24 years overall, mm -hmm. 30 years in Kiwanis. I'm wearing my Kiwanis tie. I wanted to make sure I got credit <laughs> for mentioning Kiwanis before I get fined at my next meeting. And um, I just love the community service that we do, and right. I've built so many strong relationships be because of that. Okay. The studio, there are studios in Burbank. Right. Do you get a chance to do some work for them, with them? With the, the studios? studios? Yes. Um, I haven't been uh, actually hired by the studios to do that type of photography. Okay. I do get a lot of people that are in the industry mm -hmm. that come to me because I'm very active in Burbank. I know a lot of people that are heads of uh, Disney and okay. Warner Brothers over the years because I'm very involved with, because of the chamber taking the photographs at mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the average cost for a, a layout, if you want to call it that? Oh, that really depends on what they want. I've had people come in just spend a couple hundred dollars, mm -hmm. three hundred dollars, because my portrait session for family portraits is a yes. hundred dollars. Now I, that doesn't include the images, doesn't include the prints. Okay. So sometimes people only need that one eight by ten of grandma or something like that. You know, so that that's only seventy five dollars. So yes. I, they can walk out of there one hundred and seventy five dollars. And sometimes, like that family that I did with eleven people, they spent thirteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So. It really depends on how they appreciate and value fam uh, portraits. Yes. And one of the compliments I got because I was going to be on the show today was some somebody I haven't photographed for a while, mm -hmm. but I photographed the children several times over the first few years, and she was telling me how she loves seeing those photographs on their wall in their hall and in their bedroom, that type of thing. So, hmm. what's the biggest photograph you ever took? The biggest in size, in size print yes. wise, print wise, thirty by forty. And it's hanging in my studio, a duplicate. Mm -hmm. And that's a family of 31 taken in Laguna Beach 10 years ago. The couple, the great, great grandparents, mm -hmm. were taking their family to Laguna Beach every year for 30 years. And I photographed them as a couple a few years after that. Mm -hmm. And then when he passed away last year or two years ago, th the family w went from 31 to 45 people. Mm -hmm. They even named the hall and the church after him. And just a fabulous family, and they found me because one of the siblings lived across the street from me. Right, because you know in business, what you're in, word of mouth helps a lot. Oh, it sure does, Definitely. right. Definitely. And uh, I love people handing out my business cards, which are photographs. Yes, like that's I just, a nice way, yeah. Right, while yeah. we were waiting to start, I gave yeah. one to that gentleman that was in the green room. And I liked when you, you came to his son, his son, he looked like he was a kind of a little quiet little guy, you had a smile on his face. Yeah, right. You did. That's, that's what it's all about, is meeting people and understanding how close people and photography are. You right. catch that moment. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Sometimes uh, you don't ever have to get involved with the uh, uh, death and things like that with the photography, do you? With death? With photography, with death. And taking de photo pictures of dead people. I actually was asked to photograph somebody once while they were in the casket. Wow. And we were, when Hazel was doing video, we were yes. actually hired to photograph a family after the service. Yes. This woman had laid out her wants. Mm -hmm. She wanted her s f funeral videotaped, all the people coming up and speaking, which I think everybody should have done mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's so many wonderful things said. And who's going to remember them 10 years from now, right? right? I wish my father and my mother's funeral had been videotaped, right? Yes. And um, so we, we've done a couple like that where the family would go outside and we'd gather them on the stairs and photograph the whole group mm -hmm. so everybody would have one. That was part of the deal. Mm -hmm. um, but I love doing the big families at the park because yeah. it's too big for my studio. Mm -hmm. I've had a, as many as 40, 50 in a park setting. Mm. Very, very m enjoyable for me, and I know what it means to the, the people that have organized it, the grandparents usually. Yes. So indeed. it might be an adult child. Yes, indeed. Well, one of the things I just want to ask before we leave, we've got a few more minutes. Uh, can you please tell our audience one more time about the photo discount certificate offer that we do? Sure. Yes. If people know about this discount, they're only going to know about it because you're promoting it. Mm -hmm. Then my normal s fee for an actor mm -hmm. is three hundred dollars, taking a lot of photographs, giving them the disc with the images, and I do retouch their fam favorite photograph mm -hmm. so they look just a little younger. And I do have 
uh, an example where I show people, I can actually show them in Photoshop mm -hmm. how I can round out, take the, the big cheeks away. <laughs> yeah, you know, the cheeks go out oh, with yes. a big smile. Yes. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and everybody walks out happy. Yeah. I've had a lot of people say, I hate having my picture taken. And they walk out, it's the best photograph yeah. I ever had. It's an experience yeah. that we'll never forget. Yeah. Harvey, we want to thank you very, very much for coming down today. We wish you well in your future endeavors, and we wish you well with this program. Thank we you, Ron. We're just happy and glad that we are part of it. I know the phone's yeah. going to start ringing the minute I get back to the studio. I hope so. <laughs> I sure hope so. I want to thank you, Harvey, and I want to thank you for being with us today, and we'll see you again the next time.